Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater. Starring Barbara Stanwyck, Robert Young, and Frank Lovejoy in Goodbye, My Fancy. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure that if you had a choice of going back into the past and reliving a part of your lives, a great many of you would pick your college days. Or perhaps rather than relive them, you'd just like to return there now, be awarded an honorary degree for your present accomplishments, and maybe uh, rekindle an old romance. That's what our heroine does in tonight's play which is based on the stage play Goodbye, My Fancy by Faye Kanan. As our stars of this intriguing story from the Warner Brothers Studios, we have one of Hollywood's finest actresses, Barbara Stanley, and co-starring in their original roles, Frank Lovejoy and Robert Young, who make it, uh, well, rather difficult for Barbara to make up her mind between the old romance and the new. And for romance, a young man's fancy naturally turns lovely girls with perfect complexions. We'd like to recommend Lux Toilet Soap for that fine beauty care. There is no better guarantee for romance than a radiant complexion. Now, goodbye, my fancy, starring Barbara Stanwyck as Agatha Reed, Robert Young as Dr. Jim Merrill, and Frank Lovejoy as Matt Cole. Among the members of the United States Congress, few are more widely respected and certainly none is more attractive than the Honorable Agatha Reed. Miss Reed has just returned to her office, lightly battle-worn, after another harrowing day in the cause of better government. All right, Willie, what's the mail? Another thousand or so letters. Make another speech like that last one and you'll get the post office out of the red. What's this one? Marion Dennis, radio interview about your book. Oh, I've been avoiding her for weeks. All right, but not before the middle of June. Uh, what about this invitation? It's from Good Hope College. You know I haven't time to... Well, it's from Good Hope. Yeah, that's what I said. Then you said... Woody, they want to give me an honorary degree. Well, what's so special about that? You turned down Wellesley without blinking an eye. But you don't understand. I went to Good Hope. Oh, pardon me. Oh, take a letter. Shall I type it on parchment? Special delivery to Dr. James Merrill, President, Good Hope College, Good Hope, Massachusetts. My dear Jim, I can't tell you how... No, no, you'd better make that. Dear Dr. Merrill, I can't tell you how happy I was to receive your gracious invitation to return to Good Hope for an honorary degree. Good Hope has always been close to me, and nothing short of a congressional crisis will keep me away. And if I may be sentimental, it would give me great pleasure to be able to stay in my old rooms. Sincerely, Agatha Reed. Oh, good morning, Mr. Griswold. Is he in? Uh, Dr. Merrill in his office? I believe he's alone, Mr. Griswold, but uh, perhaps I... Never better... mind. I'm going in. Uh, Jim, I I've got to talk to you. Sure. Well, sit down, won't you? <laughs> Last night, I wrote a letter to Agatha Reed, as chairman of the Board of Trustees. I thought it would be nice to let her know how happy we all are that she accepted your invitation. Well, that was very thoughtful. Then, ten minutes after the letter was mailed, my wife told me. Your wife told you what? That she used to be Agatha Reed's classmate. Oh, I thought you knew. And that Agatha Reed was expelled for staying out all night. Uh, yes, yes, she was. We're giving an honorary degree to a woman who was once expelled from here? Now, now, look, Jim, we're going to call the whole thing off. I'm afraid it's too late for that, Claude. I've given the announcement to the papers. And Real Magazine is sending a man up to cover the commencement. Real Mag... Oh, that's great. If they ever find out about her being expelled, we'll all wind up on the cover. There were a dozen women to choose from, but you've got to pick a hot potato like Agatha Reed. Why? Well... Good Hope meted out some pretty harsh punishment to her. I think it's time we told her we were sorry. 
What's more, she's one of the most outstanding women in the nation. A woman who's won recognition as a columnist, war correspondent, and author. We've got to go through with it, huh? Yes, and stop worrying. And it's entirely in your hands, Jim. She's your baby till after commencement. Thank you, Claude. I find the prospect very interesting. You may as well go on home, Woody. Our train doesn't leave until midnight. You can meet me at the station. Uh, what about my warm milk? Room service is sending it up. Maybe I should tell him to put it in the baby bottle. Meaning what? Oh, this trip back to the cradle. A crowded calendar, two important bills coming out of committee, election four months away, and we're off to braid a daisy chain at some college. Now, look, Woody, I'm going to enjoy this weekend. I'm going to be sentimental. I'm going to cry. I'm going to walk barefoot down memory lane with ivy entwined in my hair. And if you don't like it, you don't have to look. I'll bring my dark glasses. Do that. Oh, and leave the door unlocked for room service, will you? The door's open. Just put the milk on the table, please. Just milk today? No butter, eggs, yummy yogurt? Matt! That's right, Aggie. Real Magazine's favorite photographer. And yours. Matt! Well, you just said that. Usual greeting after five years is, well, this is a surprise. I'm sorry you caught me off guard. I didn't think that was possible. I see you haven't changed. Oh, no, neither have you. A little more dignified, perhaps. A little more, uh, shall we say, refined. But just as attractive as ever. I thought you were in Europe. Well, I got back this afternoon. I thought I'd find out about that date we had in Paris. When you didn't show up for five years, I began to wonder. Is it on or off? <laughs> I'm sure you didn't come here to dig all that up. You mind telling me why you didn't show up? Well, does it matter now? Well, of course it matters. When a woman runs out on a man, he ought to know why. Helps him the next time. I suppose it never occurred to you that I might have been in love with someone else. Well, it occurred to me, but I rejected it. Really? Why? Well, because I've kept tabs on you, Aggie. That hasn't been hard, not with a congresswoman. Uh, congratulations, you're doing a great job. What about before I was a congresswoman? Well, those were my years. And the years before that? Oh. Well, uh, why haven't you done something about the guy? Maybe I will. Now, do you mind, Matt? I'm in the midst of packing. I want you to leave. Uh, say, uh, did you ever get those pictures I sent you from China? Uh, yes. Yes, I did. Did you like the one of yourself? Uh, the one on the Orient Express, near in Paris. No, I didn't like it. Why not? Well, the one time you don't expect to be photographed is asleep in a train compartment. Besides, the occasion wasn't exactly the kind of thing I wanted recorded for posterity. That's funny. I thought it had the makings of one of the big moments of history. Come to think of it, you did too. Oh, Matt, please. It was fun, but war has a way of making little moments seem big at the time. Well, that's very penetrating. May I quote you sometime? Well, I'm sorry if I said it badly, but it's true. We were... Well, we were a nice snapshot, but never a family portrait. Oh, I get it. It's subtle, but I get it. You've got to go now. I have to catch the New Yorker at midnight. The New Yorker? Yes, and I haven't even started to... The New out. Yorker. Here I've been holding you up with idle chit-chat, and all the time we're going to be traveling companions. You're going to be on that train? Happy, happy coincidence, just like the good old Orient Express. Oh, don't be ridiculous. I know what trains do to some people. So long, Aggie. I'll see you on the New Yorker. Western Union, please. This is Agatha Reed. I want to send a straight wire to Dr. James Merrill, Good Hope College, Good Hope, Massachusetts. Have you got that? Please don't have anyone meet train have decided to come by plane. Sign it, Agatha Reed. Thank you. Yes? Room service, Miss Reed. Come in. Your warm milk, Miss Reed. I've changed my mind. Just bring me a double brandy. So this is it, huh? Dear old school days. Oh, Woody. Woody, just look. Oh, this wonderful, wonderful dormitory. My old room, the same furniture, the same pictures. Everything just the way it was. Looks fierce, doesn't it? Do you know what those girls told me? They moved all these things up from the basement just for me. 
Oh, I haven't cried in years. It feels wonderful. Look, if you're such a big shot, how come nobody bothered to meet you? Because I purposely stopped the taxi two blocks away. That was memory lane we walked through. That alfalfa field is memory lane? <laughs> I'm sorry for you, Woody, if you don't have something like this to remember. Come in. I'm sorry to bother you, Miss Reed. Oh, I'm the one who should be sorry, dear, putting you out of your rooms like this. Oh, no, no. Mary Nell and I think it's the greatest honor we've ever known. It's, it's this, Miss Reed, your book, Women in the Vanguard. Uh, if you'll pardon me, Agatha, I'll run out and tear down some ivy for my hair. A wreath, you know. Oh, Woody, really. And now, what about the book? Well, Dr. Pitt said we all ought to read it. Your political science teacher? No, physics. In his classes, you learn about everything. Well, it sounds as if I'd like to know him. I was wondering if, if you'd autograph it for me. I'd love to. Now, what name do I write? Virginia. Uh, oh, would you make it Ginny? Ginny Merrill. Ginny Merrill. Will your parents be here for commencement? There's just my father. Mother died four years ago. Oh. Does your father have to come very far? Oh, no. As a matter of fact, he's... You're, you're Jim Merrill's daughter, aren't you? Why, yes. Oh, I might have known. I knew your father very well. He was my favorite professor. What was he like, Miss Reed? Oh, he was very handsome. All the girls were in love with him. They still are. But that's not what I meant. Was he... Was he a good teacher? He was a wonderful teacher. I wish he were still a teacher. Oh? Is being president of a college so bad? It's different. Different? I, I'd i better be going, Miss Reed. Is it all right if I tell my father you're here? I'm sure he must be anxious to see well, you. Perhaps I'd better walk over to his office. Oh, no. He'll want to call on you. And thanks again, Miss Reed. Oh, excuse me. That's all right. That's all right. We just had a phone call. Real Magazine. They're covering your weekend here. Oh, how nice. Oh, it's better than that. They're sending Matt Cole. Who did you say? Matt Cole, the war photographer. You're joking. Why should they send him here? This isn't his type of thing at all. Yeah, but why the blood pressure? Get Real Magazine on the phone immediately. I'll put a stop to this right now. Why bother? I want to bother, and don't argue. Okay. Uh, hello? Uh, get me New York. Yeah, Real Magazine. I want to speak to Bronson personally. Uh, make that person to person to Mr. Bronson, will you? That's right. He owns the magazine. Is this a matter of life and death? I asked you not to argue. Just get Bronson on the phone. I can't. The circuits are busy. Give me the phone. Hello? This is Agatha Reed. On that call to Real Magazine, it's most important. This is a crisis? I'd appreciate it if you do everything you possibly can. Come in. Jim. Agatha, it's... It's been a long time. Twenty years. I, um... I'm taking advantage of my position. The entire college is waiting to meet you. I'm overcome. I mean it, Jim. My daughter mentioned your secretary was with you. Woody's downstairs with the telephone operator. There's an important call I'm trying to put through. Oh. I'm glad we're alone. You're looking very well, Agatha. Thank you, Jim. I suppose you realize you're in for quite a weekend. Yes, I've seen the agenda. We start in an hour with your official reception. I, uh, I can turn my back if you'd like to escape. I wouldn't think of it. Vanity, I guess. I suppose everyone dreams of coming back for an honorary degree. It's a popular ambition, like, well, like wanting a mink coat. Or to be president. Yes. How does it feel? Well, it's never dull... The face has changed so often. And with so much youth around, you actually get the feeling you're preserving your own. Well, your daughter should keep you young. She's a lovely child. No, no, that's wrong. She's not a child. What are we at that age, Jim? That that wonderful, terrible in-between time. You've seen so many of us. Yeah, uh... Well, tell me about yourself, Agatha. Have you been happy? Well, I, I've been busy... Yes, I've followed your career very closely. In that case, I won't have to bring you up to date on the past 20 years. No, only the first year. I've never quite caught up with that first year. Perhaps it's my vanity. 
that all these years I've wondered what happened. Why you just disappeared. Oh, it was very stupid of me to get caught climbing in my window at five in the morning. I, I hope the girls are more expert now. I wouldn't know. I'm not up on the statistics. <laughs> Listen, Jim, it would have made no difference to the trustees that you were the man and that we were planning to be married. I would have been kicked out anyway, only you would have been kicked out with me. I thought we decided to take that chance. I couldn't let you do it. They were already eyeing you for the presidency. Well, where did you go? My letters came back. When I phoned your home, they said they didn't know where you were. Yes, I made them promise. Once I weakened and started to write you a letter, but I never did finish it. And then later on, I... I read about your marriage. Yes. Did, uh, Ginny tell you anything about her mother? No. She was a wonderful woman. We had a lot of things in common. That helped to balance the things we didn't have. She, uh, died four years ago. Why did you feel that you had to tell me that? I don't know exactly, I suppose. What are you I... trying to say, Jim? You came up here this weekend. Why? Well, don't you remember? You invited me. <laughs> I carried that invitation around for two years before I sent it. Oh, that was silly, Jim. I answered it as soon as I got it. Bronson's in Chicago. I just told... Oh, sorry if I interrupted. That's quite all right. I was just leaving. Dr. Merrill, my secretary and right on, Miss Wood. How do you do? How do you do? Oh, Miss Reed, did I tell you it's... Wonderful to have you back. Yes, you did, Dr. Merrill. But it's good to hear it again. I'll see you at the reception. There'll be a committee calling for you at 4 o'clock. Oh, it's nice to have you here, too, Miss Wood. Thank you. Craxy's nice looking, isn't he? Yes, isn't he? Look mighty cozy just now, talking over old history exams. <laughs> Do you know what's wrong with you? You're so used to having your thumb in every Washington pie that oh, you can't... Oh, stop filibustering. All right, Woody, it's so. What so? Just what you're thinking. Oh. He's the first man I ever loved. He... He's what? Maybe the only one. The truth is, I'd marry him tomorrow if he asked me. Oh, you're, you're kidding, aren't you? What's the matter? Are you against marriage, too? Well, of course not, but you're smack in the middle of an election campaign and a hundred other things. Your life's too busy. Oh, there's quite a difference between a busy life and a full one. I thought you'd be happy for me. Well, what do you expect? I don't even know the guy. Well, I know him. Oh, this isn't just a whim, Woody. This is something I've waited for and thought about for 20 years. Maybe the most important thing in my whole life. That's why I don't want anything to spoil it. That's why I don't want... What about the phone call? Phone call? Mr. Bronson, Real Magazine. Oh, that. They're expecting him back at his hotel. Anything I can do? Oh, all right, Matt. Come on in. What do you think you're doing here? My job. I'm a photographer. You don't expect me to believe they picked you for an assignment like this, do you? Well, as a matter of fact, I asked for it. I had a great idea for a layout. The Honorable Agatha Reed and how she grew. Don't try anything. I'm warning you, Matt. Yes, ma'am. This is my secretary, Miss Wood. Hi. Oh, it's a real pleasure. Would you mind directing me to the president's office? Why? I'm supposed to check in with the old codger. Well, you'll probably find the old codger in the administration building. Now, where might that be? Woody? Let's go, Mr. Cole. Thanks, Woody. I wouldn't want him to get lost. Well, if I do, I'll send up a flare. Oh, I'll get it. Hello? Oh, yes, Mr. Bronson. We've been trying all over to find you. I mean, well, we'll say something. We just wanted to tell you we we decided to renew our subscription. <laughs> you can tell me something, Mr. Cole. Why was the Honorable so upset about you coming up here? She uh, thinks I'm in the employ of a foreign government. Oh, come on, Gib. You're about as innocent as a rattlesnake. All right. I'm here because I think she's on the verge of making a big mistake. What kind of a mistake? For a man, there's only one kind of mistake a woman can make. Another man. <laughs> Why should that bother you? It shouldn't be hard for a smart girl like you to figure out. Oh, no. Now I know who you are. You're up here to make trouble. That's who you are. But no fisticuffs when we get there. This is supposed to be a happy weekend. When we get there? 
Wait a minute. Don't tell me he's the president of this seminary. I... I thought you knew. No, thanks for telling me. Well, you tricked me. Wild horses wouldn't have dragged that out of me. Forget it. What am I worried about? If I can't take her away from some old Mr. Chips, I'll quit the business. Ha. Huh. <laughs> what does that mean? Get out that flare, Mr. Cole. You're going to need it. Act two of Goodbye, My Fancy, starring Barbara Stanwyck as Agatha Reed, Frank Lovejoy as Matt Cole, and Robert Young as Dr. Jim Merrill. The faculty reception in honor of Agatha Reed is in full progress. Among those present are Matt Cole and a professor of physics named Dr. Pitt. You care for a cup of uh, punch, Mr. Cole? Ah, oh, thank you. You have to go through this every year, Dr. Pitt. Occupational hazard. <laughs> but I'm rather enjoying it. You mean it can be worse than this? It's just that this is my last faculty reception. Good Hope and I'll soon be going our separate ways. Uh, I haven't been exactly happy under the present management. With Dr. Merrill? Oh, no. Claude Griswold. Our illustrious chairman of the board. Ah. Oh. Meanwhile, Mr. Cole, let's drink to Saturday morning. What's with Saturday morning? Oh, that's when I'll be asked to resign. I shall take my departure in a blaze of futile glory. You're going to blow up the physics building? <laughs> Not exactly. <laughs> but there will be an explosion of a kind. What kind, Dr. Finn? That's my little secret, Mr. Cole. Oh, this punch, it's uh, not very stimulating, is it? Oh, you're wrong, Dr. Pitt. I feel a noticeable lift. As a matter of fact, I... There's something wrong, Mr. Cole? Seems our guest of honor has disappeared. Well, if I'm not mistaken, I saw Miss Reed and Dr. Merrill walk out there to the terrace. Just a moment ago. Well, that should make a charming picture for the magazine. Excuse me, Dr. Pitt. I suppose I had no right to take you out here, Agatha. But there won't be many opportunities to be alone. And there's so much I want to say. We had the same problem 20 years ago, Jim. Until we discovered the amphitheater. Remember? I was just about to suggest it. The uh, usual time, the reception will be over by then. The usual time. And thank you for remembering. How could I ever... Oh, Mr. Cole... I'm sorry if I startled you, Doctor, but the layout wouldn't be complete without a picture of the president and his number one graduate. Might have been a better picture if you'd given us a little warning. Mr. Cole specializes in catching people off guard. Oh, there you are, Jim. Now, look, I've been working on Jeff Barnes. He's just about ready to fork over for the new library. I'll uh, talk to him in the morning, Ford. Uh, take my word for it and do it now. But we were just... I'll be all right, Jim. Mr. Griswold, your wife was telling me that you just gave the college a projection room and motion picture equipment. I don't mind saying it cost me a young fortune. Claude's one of the best friends this college ever had. Well, I'm honored, Mr. Griswold. You see, Miss Shackleford was saying that my film will be the first to be shown. Your film? Oh, just something I assembled a couple of years ago to illustrate a lecture. Miss Shackleford thought it might interest some of the students. Sounds fine, Miss Reed. Fine. Well, Jim? Yes, of course. We mustn't let Mr. Barnes cool off. Oh. Well, heavy odor of orange blossoms in the air. You haven't wasted a minute, have you, Matt? Merrill must be quite a guy to keep a woman like you on the hook for 20 years. Yes, he is. Quite a guy. Or else you must be getting tired. Now, what does that mean? Oh. This overwhelming desire to return to the past. Girlhood memories. Old rooms in the dormitory. Old furniture. Old sweethearts. Old hat. You've been on war fronts for so long that a decent atmosphere is bound to seem a little incongruous. Who are you kidding, Aggie? Take a good look around. Talk to some of the students. Talk to some of the professors. This is a lost world up here, and Merrill is the perfect president for it. That penetrating analysis of Jim Merrill is based on one, how do you do? Is it? <laughs> you used to be a pretty good reporter, Aggie. He talked to some of the teachers. Dr. Pitt, for example. You might get an Air Force. The 
old amphitheater, Agatha. Looks just the same, doesn't it? Just the same. I was late, wasn't I? Oh, a little. On my way, Dr. Pitt stopped me. He said you had quite a talk with him. Oh, Jim, I'm sorry. I was meddling. I had no right to. In this case, you had every right. What did you tell him? Is he going to resign? No, I asked him to remain here. That's what you expected, isn't it? Well, that's what I hoped for, but what about Mr. Griswold? Well, I imagine there'll be some tearing of hair. <laughs> but I'm sure I can manage the situation so that both sides appear to win. Oh, Jim. Remember the last time we were here? We were very young. Very much in love. And you proposed to me. Agatha, if I were to ask you again, is there any chance your answer might be the same? Oh, always on second proposals. This time you won't run away? No. Well, then I can tear this up. It's the note you left for me. You kept it. I've never quite forgiven myself for introducing you to the beauties of Walt Whitman. Goodbye, my fancy. Farewell, dear mate. Dear love. The note. May I have it? Thank you. Hello, my fancy. Agatha. Aggie? What is the name? Oh, it's you. That's the answer I always get. Well, I'll stick it out for a couple of hours longer. If she doesn't show up by morning, I'll leave. Got it bad, haven't you? Look, I'm not being nosy. I think Aggie's making a mistake, too. I don't just work for this woman. I like her. I care what happens to her. So do I. What was it with you and Aggie, anyway? Well... I hadn't seen her since the day Paris was liberated. And before that, not for months. I knew I was going to ask her to marry me. I, I think she did, too. We made a date for that night. I rustled up eight red roses, a bottle of champagne, and a ring. I tore the petals off the roses and sprinkled them in the doorway. I put the ring at the bottom of the glass. Uh, she'd uh, drink the champagne, see the ring, and catch on that I was proposing. <laughs> Nice idea, wasn't it? Yes, very. Tony Aggie never showed up. <laughs> Too bad. Well, the evening wasn't entirely wasted. I learned something that's been invaluable to me ever since. You know it only takes three hours for roses to turn brown around the edges? <laughs> I'm sorry, Cole. What are you sorry about? Now that I've seen her dream boat in action, I'm not worried. He's a memory, something she pressed in a book through the years like an old rose. And you're expecting an awful lot of her in one short weekend. That's why I'm going to give her a little help. Right before your very eyes, I'll turn that memory into a man. Very clever, if it works. Oh, it'll work. Are you leaving? Wouldn't you rather? I hear the approach of familiar footsteps. <laughs> well, uh, good evening. I was just about to put a light in the window. I'm glad you didn't bother. I know exactly where I'm going. Good night, Matt. Aggie. Aggie, I want to talk oh, to you. Oh, yes, of course, about Dr. Pitt. You'll be very unhappy to hear that any difference of opinion is now a thing of the past. Dr. Pitt will remain here. Oh, well, that's one thing in the Prexy's favor. He doesn't want to lose you. I don't blame him. He's not going to lose me. Then it's all set? All set. Well, congratulations. You just can't take it, can you, Matt? That he could be more exciting, more desirable than you. Well, that's right. I'm as vain as the next guy. Since you've gone in for collecting memories, here's another one. I'm sorry if I smeared your lipstick. Good night, Aggie. Why, it's Mr. Cole. Do come in, Mr. Cole. Good morning, Miss Shackleford. Busy taking pictures, I suppose. Well, that's what I wanted to see you about. I just want to be sure I'm at the right place at the right time. Now, let me see. Tomorrow is Saturday. Oh, but tonight. Tonight's the prom and the step sing at Grizzled Hall. Step sing? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. yes. They sing on the steps. 
Tomorrow morning, I believe Dr. Pitt mentioned something for 11 o'clock. Oh, yes, the film showing, Miss Reed's film. No, 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 I, I don't mean that. Isn't there something else on tap? Why, no, nothing. Well, there must be. Mr. Cole, there will be nothing at 11 o'clock tomorrow but Miss Reed's motion picture. Uh, anybody seen it yet? No, I don't think so. Oh, oh yes, Dr. Pitt. It was at his suggestion that I sent for it. Dr. Pitt? Oh, fine. Uh, Miss Shackelford, where can I find Mr. Griswold? Mr. Griswold? Yeah. Well, now, I'd be glad to show you, Mr. Cole. Now, you just come with me. Mm -hmm. I would have stopped by sooner, Agatha, but something came up. I just wanted to remind you about the prom tonight. Jim, are you sure that's all? No, I just couldn't wait that long to see you. Did Griswold reach you, Jim? He phoned here some time ago. I, uh, I've just come from his house. He asked about that film of mine. He seemed a little concerned. Well, yes, a little. I'm terribly sorry, darling, but I forgot to ask you anything about the picture. Do you think I would have brought anything unsuitable here? Agatha, of course not. Jim, I spent five years in Europe. I saw what happened in those countries where freedom was destroyed. That's what the film is about. Actual newsreel shots of some of the dreadful things that have happened in our time. How they burn the books, how they hang the teachers by their feet because they dared to teach the truth. You think I want to see that happen here? I'm not questioning it at all. It's just that these are touchy times, so Claude feels we ought to have a look at it. It's a shame Mr. Cole had to bring it up. Cole? Well, yes. Claude said that Cole had stopped by to take a picture. He happened to mention the film to Claude. What and... did he say about it? He praised it very highly. But when he said that Dr. Pitt had liked it too, well... Claude got a little worried. Oh, it's funny. It's really funny. Darling, believe me, we'll straighten it out. I don't need to see the picture. I know it's all right. Besides, there's something the matter with my eyes. Oh? I can't seem to see anything but you. About the prom. Wait for me here, dear. I'll pick you up. Yes, Jim, of course. Ginny, of course, yes. Yeah. Uh, what are you trying to tell me, Ginny? Well, some people think the president of a college has the right to make decisions on things. But he doesn't. He has to check everything with the trustees. Whatever he may feel himself just doesn't matter. You mean they may not run the film? My father's done wonderful things for the school. Seven new buildings in ten years. Isn't that something to be proud of? I'm so proud of... I oh, it, it's all right, Ginny. It's all right. Oh, I'm so ashamed. My father's a coward, Miss Reed. He's so afraid of losing his job, he's lost everything he ever believed in. How do you know he isn't fighting them on this? Because he's forgotten how to fight. Oh, Miss Reed, you, you just don't understand. I want to tell you something, Jenny. Something I'm sure you don't know. I was expelled from this college. You were... what? Expelled because I stayed out all night with a man. We were very much in love and planning to be married, but I ran away so I wouldn't hurt his chances of becoming president. He had strength and integrity and courage. He still has. So let's not turn away from him now, just when he needs us the most. Miss Reed. Oh, I should have known. Whenever he talked about you, he was different. And I never really gave him up. I just needed someone else to believe in him, too. Now you'd better get dressed for the prom. Oh, thank you, Miss Reed. Thank you. Agatha, you... You look beautiful. Thank you. And what's more, I'm already surprised. Your arm, Miss Reed. Oh, Jim, imagine going to a prom again. Uh, Claude and Ellen stopped by. They thought we might as well make it a force. Of course. They're downstairs. Eh? Oh, just like old times, isn't it, Ed? Hello, Ellie. Good evening, Mr. Griswold. Now, that's what I call a charming couple. Ellie, you didn't forget my pills. My stomach's murdering me. I knew it. If you hadn't got so upset at the movie, you wouldn't have had to call that meeting. Oh! Oh, that's too bad, Mr. Griswold. It sounds like it's all my fault. Oh, I didn't mean that, Ag. It's just that we were late for dinner and Claude just got... How did you uh, like the movie, Mr. Griswold? Uh, 
Well, it's no Abbott and Costello. <laughs> They're called favorites. Agatha, Claude realizes what you tried to accomplish with the film, and he... Sure, I do. But why show college kids this kind of stuff? Time enough to start worrying when they're out of college. That's a very interesting theory of education, Mr. Griswold. Is it yours? I leave theories to experts here like Jim. All I care about, frankly, is protecting the minds of the young people here. You're not protecting them, Mr. Griswold. You're destroying them. A college is where the future of the world begins, and professors aren't intellectual babysitters. It's their job to bring some light into this muddled world, but you put a stop to that. The result is the girls who graduate tomorrow aren't prepared for the world they'll have to face. Yet you're content to hand it to them and say, fight for it, die for it, but don't attempt to understand it. Miss Reed, I think we know what's best for our school. Claude, please, let me handle this. There's no handling to it, Jim. And we might as well tell her now. Miss Reed, we've canceled the showing of the film. I see. And Dr. Merrill, did he agree? On vital issues, the president and the trustees always agree. Now, suppose we get over to the prom. Hey, Claude, you and Ellen go ahead. I, I'd like to speak to Miss Reed alone. Uh, don't be too long. It wouldn't look well if you were late. Oh, oh dear. Forget it, Ellie. Now she knows just how we feel. When Jim turns on the old Charles... Oh, excuse me, have you seen Miss Reed? The man from the magazine, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Miss Reed's inside, but I don't think you'd better disturb her right now. Come along, Ellie. Ah, uh, thank you. I, uh, I'll just wait for her here. I know how you must feel, Agatha, but you must give me a chance to explain. Jim, did you see the film? Yes. Well, do you think it's wrong for your students to see it? Be honest with me. No. And you didn't stand up and say that? Agatha, I'm just asking you to try to see my position. There are times when I have to bow to... To Claude Griswold? You're exaggerating Claude's importance in this whole affair. Am I? When he and not you seems to be the real judge of what should be taught at this college? He's a businessman. He gives money and he wants his say. It's as simple as that. Why do you look so shocked? No, I'm not shocked. Just frightened. That you can stand here and say that and accept it. Good heavens, Agatha. I have to run this school. That means getting buildings, endowments. It's part of the job. Suppose I fought Griswold on this to a showdown. It would be an heroic gesture, and I'd be out of here tomorrow. Would you? You used to love a fight like that. Well, things are quite different now. I I have Ginny to think about. Oh, there's no need to lie to me. I've talked to Ginny. And if you're not careful, you're going to lose her. I don't know how important that is to you, but I suspect it's very important. What have you been telling her? Oh, dreadful things. That you have courage, integrity... And I didn't just say it, Jim. I believed it. Stand up to Griswold. Not for me, not even for Ginny, but for yourself. All right, Jim. I know when I'm beaten. I'm going to offer you a deal. A business deal. That's more in your line. What are you talking about? A few minutes ago, I assured your daughter that you'd run that film tomorrow. So I'm afraid you're going to do it with or without Mr. Griswold's consent. Is this your idea of a joke? No, no. And in exchange for that small service, I'll give you my personal guarantee that the article in Real Magazine won't even hit at the colorful events leading up to my expulsion from the seat of higher learning. I can't believe you... Why not? You see, Jim, I'm willing to take a chance on you. I know now that you're afraid. And with a man who's afraid, it's just a question of the lesser of two evils. Whether you risk being removed from here by running the film or whether you accept the certainty of being removed after this story breaks. You'd really do a thing like that? No. Yeah. You learn all kinds of cute tricks in my work. The most important one being never to play fair unless you respect the men you're dealing with. I'd never believe this could happen. Not after last night. Last night was 20 years ago. Listen, there. They're playing the alma mater. Very appropriate, isn't it? Come along, Jim. We'll be late for the prom.
The curtain rises on Act Three of Goodbye, My Fancy, starring Barbara Stanwyck as Agatha Reed, Robert Young as Dr. Jim Merrill, and Frank Lovejoy as Matt Cole. It's the following morning, and the motion picture theater at Good Hope College is rapidly filling with students and faculty. In front of the theater, Matt Cole has just walked over to the student advisor, Miss Shackleford. Why, but you look just radiant this morning, Miss Shackleford. <laughs> Why, Mr. Cole? So you're showing the movie, huh? Sort of a flexible program you run up here, isn't it? Oh, it's completely beyond me. Last night, Dr. Merrill tells me to cancel the film, and this morning he says to go ahead. Dr. Merrill ordered the film shown? Well, it's not my responsibility. Oh, I'll certainly be glad when this weekend is over. Hi. Oh, hi. All alone, Woody? Isn't the Honorable going to show up? The film's about to begin. Now, listen out of focus. Merrill came through, didn't he? <laughs> They're running her picture, aren't they? You know what that does to your chances. Oh, well. What are you so happy about? I'm not happy. I'm sad. But you've got to be philosophical about it. You take the bad with the good. You're up. You're down. You're punch drunk. You coming in? No, no. I've seen the picture. I think I'll take one last happy look at Good Hope. Might run into an old friend. You know, a man can wear himself out walking around this campus looking for someone. What are you doing here, Matt? What are you doing here, Agatha? I happen to like the amphitheater. They're showing your film. I know. Aren't you glad? Yes, of course. Well, it seems I was wrong about Murrow. Oh, fine, but there's no need to eat. Eat crow. Oh, I don't mind. I don't have any pride where you're concerned, Aggie. You ought to know that. We've been all through this, Matt. You've got nothing to say to me, huh? It's all been said. Yeah, but I'm stupid. I've got to have it spelled out. He's a great guy. He's everything you ever hoped for, dreamed about all these years, and you're going to marry him. Is that it? I don't want to talk about it. Okay, I'll go down and congratulate Dr. Merrill. Matt! You couldn't face that, could you? Because you know it's a lie. You threw away six years that we could have had together. Six wonderful, beautiful years, all because of a lie, and you haven't got honesty enough to admit it. To me or to yourself. You've got to hang on to your precious ego. Well, you can have it, sister. I'm a big boy now. I got bigger and better things to do. And don't worry, I'll stay away from Merrill. <laughs> Agatha? Come in, Jim. You're not packing. That's right, Jim. I'm leaving. My commencement speech is there in the wastebasket. If I had to stand up here this afternoon and say it, I'd choke on every word. Don't you realize... You can say I was taken ill, that I was called back to Washington, anything. Just like 20 years ago, isn't it? Running away again. Jim, I was wrong last night, expecting you to be the same man I remembered. And I was wrong to think I could help you win back your daughter. I can't blackmail you for the rest of your life. It's better that she know the truth now while she's young. Would you tell Jenny that? That I ordered your film shown because if I didn't, you were going yes, to... Yes, if I had to. Yes, I'd tell her. Who is it? It's Jenny, Miss Reed. Come in, Jenny. I went to your office, Father. They told me you'd come here. We just saw your picture, Miss Reed. It was wonderful. Oh, I wish you'd been there, Father. I'm sure none of us will ever forget it. It was the best graduation present you could have given the senior class. And me. I I just wanted to thank you. Jenny, uh, don't go. Yes? You kissed me just now, Jenny. You haven't done that in a long time. I'm very grateful. But I can't accept it under false pretenses. False pretenses? Jim, no, don't. I had the movie shown only because Miss Reed forced me to. She gave me an alternative that left me no choice. Oh. That's the truth, and I want you to know it. I haven't been much of a father for quite a while. I'm sorry, Jenny. I didn't tell you all this to hurt you. You've forgotten a lot of things about me, haven't you? That I don't cry only when I'm sad. That I cry just as much when I'm happy. Oh, I don't care why you showed the film. I just wanted you to be honest with me and with yourself. Oh, so this is where you all are. Ellen, if you don't mind, It's all we... right. Come in, Ellen. Now, what is all this nonsense, Jim? Claude's terribly upset. The whole board's upset. First, when they heard about the movie, and then right out of the blue, this, this resignation. Resignation? Oh, it was just beautiful, Jim. 
Especially that part about self-respect. It just about made me cry. Jim, why did you do it? I stood in back of the theater a little while ago and watched them looking at the picture. Suddenly I realized I had almost not let them see it. That's when I knew that everything you said last night was true. That I had no right to be the president of a college. Why, Aggie, how could you have told him such a thing? Why, Jim, you should hear them all shouting back there at home about how much good you've done to this school. And what a row the students would raise if they heard about it. Wouldn't they, Jimmy? They'd raise a heck of a row, Mrs. Griswold. Why, I didn't resign as alumni president. Thank you, Ellen. Oh, oh my goodness, Jenny. What are you doing here? Did you forget it's commencement? I'm going, Mrs. Griswold. I always wondered why they called it commencement. Now I know. Well, i better be leaving, too. I just wanted to ask you to reconsider, Jim. Oh, oh, uh, you won't mention this to Claude, will you? He'll like thinking it was his own idea. Very important to a man like Claude, you know. Think everything's his own idea. I'm afraid I've been underestimating you, Ellen. You forget. I was once a student in your history class, too. See you later, Aggie. I'm overwhelmed, Jim. I never expected this. Well, yeah, we're even. Neither did I. Will you reconsider? I think it's very important to good hope that you stay on. When I came in here, I wanted to tell you again how much I love you. That I didn't have much hope for it after last night. But that somehow, today, I know we're different people than we were 20 years ago. I know that a lot of things have changed. But I wouldn't want to go through the rest of my life feeling I hadn't tried. Do I have a chance? You might have had a very good chance, Jim. Except that... Well, you see, we only met today. Just now, really. And there's someone who has a few years start on you. Yes. He's lucky. Thank you. You will stay, won't you? For commencement, I mean? Yes, I'll stay. Thank you, Agatha. Well, hello. Hello? No, I, I mean Agatha. Well, where have you been? Where have I been? Where have you been? Straightening out my life. Well, now I know. What arrangements did you make for getting us out of here? Getting us out? Oh, by plane, Woody, tonight. You'd better phone Washington, tell them to set up that committee meeting for 10 tomorrow morning, and call Senator McElroy, tell him he was right. I'll make a swing through the whole state before election, and, uh, oh, yes, close your mouth. You look like a fish. <laughs> but I thought now, you and Mel were... Now, oh, and I've got to change my shoes. <laughs> Hello, this is Miss Woods. Would you get me the airport, please? All right, Woody, where's the honorable? Look, Cole, would you mind telling me something? What's going on? Okay, I'll hold on. Meryl runs the film. You're philosophical, and she straightens out her life. I don't get it. You will. What in my black shoes? What did you do with... Well, I thought you were on your way to bigger and better things. I've got some news for you. Hello? Leave us alone, Woody. But I just... I said leave us alone. Oh, I'll call you later. Aggie, you're not going to do it. You're not going to marry Really? Now, look, I'm not asking you to fall into my arms. I wouldn't even catch you if you did. There's one thing I found out this weekend. I don't like women. Then why all the bother? Because I'm neat. I straighten pictures. I put the tops on toothpaste tubes. I don't like unfinished things lying around. You're not going to go through with this and throw away your life. Aren't you being a little overconfident? I don't think so. I'm offering you a deal. A business deal. And in exchange for such a small service, I'm giving you my personal guarantee that the article in Real Magazine won't even hit at the colorful events leading up to your expulsion from this seat of higher learning. Why, you... See pictures on opposite page. So you're an eavesdropper, too, among all your other accomplishments. You learn a lot of cute tricks in my work, too. Well, it seems I have no choice, have I? Woody! Yes, ma'am? There's been a change of plans, Woody. We're leaving Good Hope tonight. Huh? You'd better phone Washington. They can set up a committee meeting for tomorrow, tomorrow at 10 and call Senator McElroy. Tell him I'll make a swing through the entire state before the election. But you just... I know, me. I know. There's been a change of plans. Oh, a change of plans. <laughs> Miss Reed. Miss Reed, are you ready? Ginny? The ceremonies are going to begin. Well, I, I guess I'm ready. Oh, your speech. Have you got your speech? My speech? I, I left it on the desk. What did you do with it? I never touched I it. I distinctly remember leaving it on What's the desk. What's that in the wastebasket? Oh. We had no fire. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> come on, come on, let's go. Ginny, where are you? 
One weekend. Could a woman go crazy in one weekend? What's so crazy about changing her mind? Changing her mind? She told me the same thing five minutes ago. She what? What are they putting the food around here anyway? <laughs> now what got into you? Sweetheart, don't even try to understand it. Just relax and enjoy it. <laughs> Hello. Well, what kept you? Oh, Matt, you were right. We have missed six wonderful years. I- I've been so blind. Why didn't you make me see? Why didn't I make you? Oh, you politician, you. <laughs> And now, here's Mr. Keeley with our star. And we want to thank them for a very exceptional show. Barbara Stanwyck, Frank Lovejoy, and Robert Young. (laughs) You certainly have done a lot for education this evening, Barbara. And just what have I done? You've shown our audience that women can be brilliant and beautiful. Well, all I've done is use Lux Toilet Soap faithfully. It's my favorite complexion care. A perfect combination of brains and beauty care. You know, all smart women use Lux Soap. Well, I'm certainly in favor of it, Bill. What college did you attend, Barbara? Well, as a matter of fact, I finished school at the age of 13. Really? What held you up? Uh, you weren't caught climbing through the window at 5 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, Frank. Barbara, at the age of 13, got her first job in the chorus. That'll make you back up, Frank. I retreat. Hold it, Frank. Seems to me you've just finished a picture at Warner Brothers entitled Dream Treat, something or other. Yes, Barbara, it's a Milton Sperling production for Warner Brothers. Retreat, you should pardon the expression, hell. I will pardon it because it's about the courageous attitude of the Marines in Retreat Hell, an excellent picture of the Korean War. Well, now that we're all in full retreat, why don't you tell us about next week's play, Bill? Gladly, Barbara. Next week, we'll have a swashbuckling adventure story. Captain Horatio Hornblower. And as our stars in this recent Warner Brothers screen success, playing their original roles, the exciting team of Gregory Peck and Virginia Mayo. Great. Here's a beauty tip from one of Hollywood's loveliest young stars, that charming Lux girl, Dorothy Patrick. She says, daily active lather facials with Lux toilet soap do wonders for my skin. Make it softer, smoother, really lovelier. Why don't you try the simple care Dorothy Patrick recommends? You'll find it's easy to be Lux lovely. Lux soap's gentle, active lather cleanses so thoroughly, quickly gives skin appealing, fresh new beauty. Put Hollywood's own beauty soap on your shopping list tomorrow. Lux Toilet Soap is as fine a complexion soap as money can buy. You'll soon discover why nine out of ten screen stars are Lux Girls. Lux Toilet Soap Care is guaranteed by Lever Brothers Company to give your complexion a fresher, smoother, lovelier look or your money back. Lieber Brothers Company, New York, New York, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Gregory Peck and Virginia Mayo in Captain Horatio Hornblower. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Robert Young, star of radio's Father Knows Best, has appeared through the courtesy of the Crosley Corporation. Heard in our cast tonight were Lorreen Tuttle as Ellen, Joan Banks as Woody, Rhoda Williams as Ginny, Herbert Butterfield as Griswold, Howard McNair as Dr. Pitt, Gwen Delano as Miss Shackelford, and Eddie Marr. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Rudy Schrager. Our Lux Radio Theater production of Goodbye, My Fancy has come to you with the good wishes of the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, Hollywood's own beauty soap. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear Captain Horatio Hornblower, starring Gregory Peck and Virginia Mayo.